feels good to be back again uh, with some uh, lectures still on the subject matter GCD alternative to practical probable uh, question. Okay, um, we have another question for you today. We're going to move straight to the point. We have another question for you today, uh, which is a probable question. Uh, for GCE on additive to practical physics. Yes. Physics. Yes. A probable question. Okay. Uh, do not forget uh, to like our videos, to share, to subscribe, and of course to turn on the notification bell. Also, do not forget uh, to check us out on. Uh, 300 plus academy.com where you can link up with uh, fellow uh, scholars like you preparing for uh, various exams and uh, you can share ideas there. Okay, straight to the point, cut the chase. Uh, the experiment we have for you here is on electricity. It talks about the circuit. I can see a real start here. I just test such that. Uh, a small current passes in the current, as you can see, uh, displaying on your uh, screen. But um, you know, getting straight uh, into it, we were told to read and record the uh, values of the current, and also this experiment was performed uh, repeatedly five times uh, so that we get accurate values. So, in the first question that ensued, we were told to. Uh, of course, look out for we're going to look out for the um, values of the current. Question number two one states: Read and record the values of the current I. So the values of the current I, as you can see displayed on your screen, is uh, what exam you have uh, written on the board already. If you look at the uh, first figure, figure 3A, uh, I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, um, talking about our current in amperes, we have 0 0.10, 0 0.30, 0 0.70, 0 0.90, 1.5, 20 amperes, okay, also, Immediately after that, in Roman figure 2, we were told to look for the inverse. We were told to look for the inverse of the current that is i raised to power minus 1. i raised to power minus 1, which in very good is 1 over i. That is the meaning 1 over i. Yes, this is 1 over i. So we were told to look for that. So. Uh, 1 divided by 0 0.10 is going to give me 10. 1 divided by 0 0.30 is going to give me 3.33. And 1 divided by 0 0.70 is going to give me 1.43. 1 divided by 0 0.90 is going to give me 1.11. 1 divided by 1.20 is going to give me 0 0.83. That ends that. In Roman figure 3, we were told to read and record the corresponding values of the potential difference that you can see on your screen. By potential difference here, uh, we mean voltage. So, looking at figure 3B, what we have there is uh, 0 0.20, 0 0.60 volt, 1.40 volt, 1.75 volt, and 2.40 volts. That is on Roman figure 3. And on Roman figure 4, we were told to evaluate V raised to power minus 1. V raised to power minus 1, which means 1 over V. That's 1 over V. Oh, sorry. Not this place. Not this. Not here. We were told to look for. V raised to power minus 1, otherwise as 1 over V. That's 1 over V. You have that right. So, 1 divided by 0 0.20 is going to give me 5. 1 divided by 0 0.60 is going to give me 1.67. 1 
1 divided by 1.40 is going to give me 0 0.71. 1 divided by 1.75 is going to give me 0 0.57. And 1 divided by 2.40 is going to give me 0 0.42. That is on Roman figure 4. On Roman figure 5, I was told to plot a graph of V raised to the power minus 1 on the vertical axis and I, the current, inverse of the current um, on the horizontal as a starting both axes from the zero origin. Of course, you know what you need uh, to plot your graph. You need your 30 centimeter ruler. If you're plotting on paper, you need your pencil. Um, you need uh, your eraser. Just about those three is exactly what you need. So, we're going to plot a graph on Roman figure six. Yes, Roman figure six. So, C graph uh, for uh, the inverse of the voltage against the current. So, the first thing we do when we want to plot our graph is to write the title. We say graph of V raised to power minus 1 in per volt against inverse of the current in per amperes. In per amperes. So that is what we have. And then the next thing you want to do is, of course, irrespective of the values, let me use my ruler, irrespective of the values of that you have on this table, you first of all want to draw a very neat and uh, unbroken line for your vertical axis like you've always done. Okay, I just go right in. concept is all in. So here we have it very uh, clean, straight, unbroken lines. Um, we'll be mindful of that so that you don't miss out on valuable maps uh, in your exam. Okay, so the next thing is to get the vertical axis right into it and you go avoid broken lines. Irrespective, I've been able to get that down, okay, so that that is very clear. So, what I have here is my V raised to power minus 1 in per volt, and what I have here is my current raised to power minus 1 in per ampere. So now, the next thing we are meant to do, the next thing we are meant to do now is to try and pick our point. Okay, when my voltage is 5, my current is 10. But before that, let me try and, you know, get my scale. Okay, thinking of the vertical axis was 0 0.42 to 5, so I'm thinking 1 to, of course, 5. I'm thinking 1 to 5. 1, 2, three, four, five. And of course, if you're plotting on paper, I'll implore that you use, um, in this case now, from here to here, that's two centimeter. From here to here, that's two centimeter. So what I want to do in this regard is, I want, okay, let this be my zero origin. I want this to be 1.00. I want this to be my two points. 0, 0. I want this to be my 3.00 per volt, 4.00 per volt, and then 5.00 per volt. If I am to write out that in terms of the scale I am planning to use here, from here to here is 2 centimeter. It means I am saying that on my V raised to minus 1 per volt axis, per volt axis, what I am trying to do is that what I am trying to do is to make two centimeter, two centimeter 
to represent two certain that to represent one volt, one point zero zero a volt. That is what I just did. But if you're plotting on paper, I would implore that you use a, instead of two centimeter to represent one, you could use four centimeter, which means from here to here to here, that's two, two. That's four centimeter to represent one unit, so that your graph at least covers the whole of your paper graph we call. On your paper graph, you can use four centimeter here to here to here, like this, to represent one unit and you will still be correct. Okay. Now, looking at my horizontal axis, that's the inverse of my current. The least uh, figure there is 0 per litre and the highest is looking 10. So I'm thinking, for my uh, graph here, I'm thinking 2 0 0 4.00, 6.00, 8.00, 10.00, so I'm um, uh, good to go. Okay. Now leaving or moving away from that, the next thing to do is to try and pick up our point. Of course, when my the inverse of my voltage is five, the inverse of my current is ten. So you try to pick that point. You're looking at five, and then you're looking at ten. If you look, they meet here. I'm gonna get that point. Okay. I get that down. And then I have, um, the next thing I have there is 1.67 and 3.33. 1.67, okay, and 3.33. Let me get the scale for my horizontal axis down as well. From here to here is 2 cm. From here to here is another 2 cm. So here, it means 2 cm to represent these uh, two units. Okay. What I'm doing here is two centimeter to represent two point zero zero uh, ampere, and uh, that talks about the scale for my uh, horizontal axis. Okay, now let's continue with our point. Okay, when the voltage is one point six seven, the uh, current inverse of the current reading is three point three three. So. I want to pick my V force 1.67. If this is 1, this is 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, and then 2. So 1.67 should be between 6 and 7 here. 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 1 1.6. So 1 1.67 should be somewhere in between. Okay? I'm able to pick that. Now 3.33. If this is 2, and this is 4, so this should be 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.83, 2.4, 2.6, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2
around here, okay? Somewhere around here. I've been able to take that down as well. And then last but not the least, I have um, 0.42 for my voltage. 0 0.4 to that, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. 4.2 should be, you know, just after 0 0.4, okay? And um, I'm looking at uh, 0 0.83, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.83, okay? Just immediately after, okay? So I'm looking at somewhere here, okay? These are what my point looks like. I've been able to pick my point. And that's what question six is saying. Starting both uh, axes from origin zero, I've been able to pick my point. And then on question VII7, seven, question seven, VII, I was told to determine the slope. You know the parole. When we're looking for a slope, it's always y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x. Well, that's changing the vertical divided by changing the horizontal. So, in order for me to get my slope, I'm going to pick my ruler. I want to try and pick up at least three points and I hope. But in this graph, it's all looking all good based on what I can see here. Okay? It's looking all good. It's looking like I might be able to get all my points together. Okay? It's looking like I might be able to get all my points together right now. Starting from the end here. Okay. I've been able to pick the points and uh, let's see. This is what we have. I've been able to, I've been able to pick all of the five points thus far. So I haven't done that since I'm looking for my slope. Okay. I want to go. Somebody was asking uh, uh, me a question online about how do I get my slope. Uh, what has to be the size of my triangle? It doesn't really matter. Even if your triangle, let's say, okay, I have my uh, uh, my graph this way, it doesn't matter if this is the size of your triangle or you've gone further and your triangle even looks bigger. And your triangle looks bigger. It doesn't matter. Your slope will be the same, even if your triangle is this small. So long as it's on the same straight line that you. Uh, getting out your right angle, then your slope is still going to be the same. And of course, there is room for at least plus or minus 0 0.5 for your slope. For that, talking about the correctness of your slope. So now, uh, looking at this graph, trying to get uh, a very good figure for the uh, slope. I am going to settle for whatever it is I am comfortable with. Okay, I want to pick. My graph. I don't want to pick from the end this time around. Okay. I'll just try to go for what I am comfortable with. Okay. I'll be able to identify what I want to do here. Okay. Now, so that this side is going to be my change in the inverse of the voltage in per volt. Okay. Having done that, I'm now going to come here, take this question very seriously. Okay, I've been able to get this as well. So this is going to be my change in the inverse of the current and that's in uh, ampere. Okay, now that I've been able to do that, I want to get out uh, those points in the extrapolated line. So this falls on four. So you see? Now this falls here on one. Now this here falls of one, so I've been able to identify for the vertical as it's change in the inverse of the voltage. Now talking about the horizontal axis, okay, my slope falls here, 
I'm going to make my extrapolation. It falls on 8. And um, looking at this, this falls on 8. This falls on, um, if I'm not mistaken, this falls on. This falls on two. So I've been able to pick those points. So when I come here now, I'm trying to get a value for my slope. Okay, my change. That will be my change in V in per volts divided by I was talking about my X. Change in the inverse of the current in per ampere. And what this means is four. Take out one. 4.00 minus 1.00 minus 1.00 per volt divided by change in the current. This is looking 8 take out 2. 8.00 take out 2.00 per ampere. So this is going to mean 3.00 per volt divided by 6.00 per uh, ampere. So that's going to give me, for my slope, that's going to give me 0 0.5. Dealing with my slope, that's 1 over V times A over 1. So that's 0 0.5 ampere per volt. Ampere per volt is the same thing as saying 0 0.5 uh, ohms. You want me to prove that? Okay. Recall that according to Ohm's law, recall that according to Ohm's law, V equals to IR. So if I want to make the resistance the subject here, resistance becomes voltage over current. My voltage is in volts, my current is in ampere. So which means when I say volts per ampere, it's same thing as saying ohms. Ohms. But when I look at what I have here, it's the reverse. Now, it's now ampere per volt. And that is why when you have ampere per volt, you are going to call that uh, uh, per ohms. Ampere per volt means per ohms. So that we will be able to get the value for our slope. And when you look at what we got, 0 0.5, that looks good enough. Round figure. That is good enough. So that ends question seven. On question eight, on question eight, VII. On question eight, VII, as you can see on your screen, also to evaluate K. In this case, K means slope raised to power minus one. So inverse of the slope. So in this case, my slope raised to power minus one means one over X. So my 1 over x will be 1 divided by 0 0.5 per ohms. In this case now, the ohms should go up. So that what I have 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2. And this will now be ohms. So that is 2 ohms. That is what that is going to uh, give us. So that ends question 8. On question 9, we were told to state two precautions necessary uh, for us to get accurate results here. State two precautions, you can see that on the screen, that you would take to ensure accurate results. Two precautions that you would take to ensure accurate results. On the next question, IX, we were told to state two precautions. So, um, talking about uh, most electricity uh, questions, okay, uh, but if you look at um, here we we started from, we have a cell, we have a key, we have a real start, we have a voltmeter, and then we have an ammeter. So, uh, the very first thing to ensure here, so that we don't run down the battery, is that when we are not taking readings, when we are not taking readings, we must uh, ensure that the key is removed. Because if we don't, it now means if the key is not removed, while we take the first reading, and we are trying to put that down. Before we come back for the second reading, that runs down the battery. So you don't want to run down your battery. What you want to do is to conserve and uh, manage that. So the first precaution is to ensure your key is removed 
when readings are not being taken to avoid running down the battery. Another thing is to ensure clean terminals and uh, tight connection, talking about your wires and all of that. You want to ensure clean terminals and tight connection. This is, of course, uh, something you should be conversant with if you've been following all of the electricity practicals we've been having in this series. Okay. Also recall that at one time we've talked about zero error. Now zero error, let me explain once again, simply means we are using an instrument um, whose pointer is not pointing at zero when that instrument is not used. Take for instance, let's say an ammeter, the pointer should be on zero report. If before I start using the pointer had moved away from zero, it now means that by the time I make use of that ammeter, I must put into consideration that zero error to subtract whatever the pointer must have read before uh, I started with my experiment or before I take my own reading. So I must correct zero error in the ammeter and the volt meter. Another thing is, of course, to avoid parallax error in the ammeter and volt meter when taking my reading. When I'm looking, uh, trying to pick readings from my ammeter and volt meter, I want to look at that um, head on. I don't want to look from the side. That is going to affect precision. That is going to give us uh, uh, error in our uh, recording. So, at least these four uh, precautions I want to take to ensure accurate result. Okay, that ends question IX. The next question we have is on question B, talking about a constant wire as a cross section, we can see that on the screen, as a cross sectional area of 4 times 10 raised to power minus 8. Okay, I'm talking about B1. We have a cross sectional area of 4 times 10 raised to power minus 8 meter square. Okay, that's what we have for the question. And resistivity, okay, resistivity given the symbol. Uh, looking like P, but not exactly P. 1.1 and 10 raised to power minus 6 ohms meter. Okay. If the resistor of resistance 11 ohms is to be made from this wire, okay, the resistor, that's the resistance here, is 11 ohms. Okay. Calculate the length of the wire. So we're looking for the length of the wire. These are the parameters I have for question B1. Of course, you remember your uh, formula for resistance. Uh, resistance um, is actually your uh, resistivity times the length divided by the area. I recall that I do memorize this with play. Play, also meeting the word play, so that I know that my arm equals to plane resistivity uh, length divided by the area okay let's get into it since i'm looking for my length i want to make my length the subject this comes here that becomes r a equals to uh, resistivity times length so that my length becomes uh, r a divided by uh, resistivity and what that will mean is the resistance is 11 the cross-sectional area is four times 10 raised to the power minus 8, all divided by the resistivity is 1.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. So you, from there, you'll be able to compute this. 11 times 4 divided by 1.1, and of course, you have, um, if it, when you compute all this, um, what you should add here, 11 times 4, for the 4 divided by 1.1, that should give you 40 times 10 raised to the power minus 8 minus minus 6. So that's 40 times 10 raised to the power. Of course, this will give you plus. Minus 8 plus uh, minus 8 plus 6. That gives you minus 2. So 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. Uh, your length should give you 0 0.4. As this just means 40 times 1 over 100. So that is 0 0.40 uh, meters. Okay, that's what you have, 0 0.40 meters or 0 0.4 meters. That is the length. That's for question B1. For question B2, question uh, B2 says, a cell supplies current of 0 0.6 amperes and 0 0.2 amperes 
through 1 ohms and 4 ohms resistors respectively calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Of course, uh, physics students, we are very conversant uh, with this formula for the EMF of the battery. Take note, the EMF is not the same thing as the potential difference. Uh, they vary, but don't worry, uh, this is practical physics. So, when we start our series on uh, UTME preparation, we begin to learn the differences between cell EMF and, of course, a potential difference internal resistance, resistance itself. But well, let's just get through with this uh, GCE uh, alternative to practical, then start proper with uh, UTME classes. You just have to be here to aid your UTME. Okay, E, that's the EMF of the cell, is current into bracket. Uh, the resistance plus the uh, internal resistance. And if you look at the question very well, uh, this is I'm talking about my EMF here. From uh, what I have there, what we are going to be doing is 0 0.6. Recall that in the question you have 0 0.6 for the current. Okay. Uh, and then we have um, one of the resistors. Uh, one of the resistors to be one, okay. Let this be one plus internal resistance, okay. That's for my EMF, and that uh, should still be equal to the same uh, formula. So that for the uh, next one, I have 0 0.2, 0 0.2 into bracket. The resistance there is four plus internal resistance, okay. If I expand this. I'm going to get 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 R because with 0 0.2 times 4, if I compute that 0 0.2 times 4 should give me 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 R. Okay, working on this, uh, if I collect like terms, 0 0.6 can stay here so that I have 0 0.6 R. 0 0.6 R, this comes here and becomes. 0.2R equals to 0.8. Okay, 0 0.6 moves to the moves to the other side minus 0.6. Okay, so what do I have here is 0.4R equals to 0.2. So my R internal resistance equals to 0 0.2 divided by 0.4, and that's going to give me 0.5. Ohms. So that is the value for my internal resistance. And with that, I've been able to answer all of the questions for this uh, alternative to practical experiment. Uh, don't forget, take it very seriously. And um, I tell you, you will be able to ace your physics practical, which carries bulk of the math in your. Uh, GCE thesis. Okay, with that, uh, from myself and the team at the 300 plus academy, we've come to the end of this uh, probable uh, question. Don't forget, like, comment, let us know how you feel about um, all we've been doing, all of the lectures, and also uh, subscribe to this channel because with this channel, you can be sure that you're going to get quality preparation for all of your exams. And don't forget, turn on the notification bell so that each time we upload videos, uh, of course, you can get notified. Also, uh, you can check us out on our website at uh, 300 plusacademycom We are the first thing you're going to see there is how to link up uh, uh, with us on WhatsApp so that you can directly ask questions if anything of this is not clear uh, to you and uh, you can also link up with other pe uh, of, or colleagues uh, preparing for the same exam you can share academic uh, materials and you can you know get to ask uh, questions anonymously and we will do justice to all of your questions. For myself and the team, it's bye for now. Thank you.